Now that we have a basic understanding of digital logic elements, and we've seen what it means to have a clock running a digital system, it's time to make something a little more fun and go through a typical design process for building a digital logic circuit. A shift register is a type of data register that can shift its data to the right or left, which means it loses one bit of data and adds a new bit of data to the array with the frequency of the clock. Typically, a shift register will be 4, 8, 16, or 32 bits wide. For this lesson, we're going to design a 4-bit shift register using only flip-flops. The 555 timer will be set up to run at 0.5 Hz as our clock, and a push button will be used to provide initial input, whether it should be a logic 0 or logic 1. And then, later on we'll swap in the crystal oscillator just for fun to see what effect it has on the shift register. In a shift register, the clock signal is used to shift bits into the register one clock period at a time. Luckily, we have a flip-flop that acts just like this, and it's the D flip-flop. If we were to put four D flip-flops in series like this array on your screen, each output from the four flip-flops will be a unique value, and with each clock period, the D flip-flops will shift that data to the right, since all of the outputs of each D flip-flop are connected to the next D flip-flop's input. The full logic diagram and schematic looks like this, where we need four D flip-flops to build the circuit. The last thing we need to draw up and look at is the timing diagram. If we have our clock on the first line of the timing diagram and the inputs and outputs on the rest, you can see how the data input cascades through every output of the four bit shift register. And that after four clock ticks, the data bit is shifted out of the register completely. Since we've moved our way through the theory, let's get moving building the circuit. Here's the circuit schematic again in case you need to refer to it. The parts we'll need to build this 4 bit shift register are the jumper wire kit, a breadboard, a 9 volt battery, and from the components kit, 14 10 kilo ohm resistors, 6 100 ohm resistors, 6 red LEDs, a 10 and 100 microfarad capacitor, a 7805 5 volt regulator, a push button, a 9 volt battery connector, a 555 timer, two 7474 D flip-flop ICs, and the crystal oscillator if you're curious how the system reacts to a super fast clock input. To build the circuit, first we start, as always, with the power supply. The 7805 5 volt regulator goes into the breadboard and the 9 volt battery connector connects to it. Next we connect the 7805's ground and plus 5 volt outputs to the ground and power bus lines of the breadboard. Two red wires are used at the bottom of the breadboard to connect the power and ground bus lines together. Now all the ICs and push button are placed on the breadboard and from this point we'll go step by step following the schematic connecting everything together on the breadboard. With the circuit built up, now let's power up the system and see how it works. The 555 timer's output LED should blink back and forth, but none of the shift register LEDs should light up. Press and hold the push button. This will put a logic 1 at the input of the shift register, and slowly as the clock ticks, logic 1s will be shifted through the register. Similarly, when you stop pressing the push button, logic 0s begin to be shifted into the shift register. 
Thus, the system reacts to our input exactly as we saw in the timing diagram. Just for fun, let's take out the 555 timer and put in the crystal oscillator. Insert the crystal oscillator in the breadboard, add power and ground, and then connect the output to the D flip-flops clock input. Power the system up, and you'll see like before, the shift register is ready for input. However, this time when you press the push button, all the LEDs light up virtually simultaneously. This is due to the fact that the crystal oscillator is providing a clock that changes in the micro or nanoseconds range, which is too fast for our eyes to see, and so everything appears to be happening with no delays. While the shift register might seem like a simple idea, they are actually used in a wide variety of applications. The most common is in serial to parallel converters. Many systems like RS-232, USB, SPI, PCI Express, or Firewire all use one bit at a time serial communication. A shift register like this one could be used to catch the data coming in and output it in a parallel chunk of four bits. In modern digital electronics, we usually don't use our own flip-flops to build a shift register. There's actually an IC dedicated to this functionality, called the 74HC595, which is included in the components kit. Take a look at it and what it has to offer to see how you can find and use an 8-bit shift register in a single integrated circuit. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Shift registers provide you a good base for building upon. However, now is not the time to stop learning. There's more. So next time, we'll continue by taking a look at digital counters and design our own 4-bit ripple counter.